Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bee Boutique. So I've been making and teaching how to make jewelry for a very long time now. And one of the things that I hear all the time is, you make it look so easy. Well, that's because I think it is. So I'm gonna take some simple parts and some simple techniques, and I'm gonna teach you how to make your very own jewelry. So if you wanna see what I'm making today, come and join me. So before we get started today, I want to make sure that you stick around to the very end of the video. We had our great bead extravaganza last weekend and I offered up six prizes for people who left certain comments. So I've listed them all at the end. If you won, congratulations and thank you to everybody that left a comment. It really did warm my heart and I appreciate that you allowed me to do mine recorded instead of live. If you did win, make sure to drop me a note at my email. I don't like to leave it on screen because, you know, those bots pick things up. So you can always go to my website at www.kellysbeadboutique.com. Make sure to spell Kelly with an IE and you can drop me a note and I will get your prize to you. So for today's video, we are going to be using a few different parts. We've got two pieces of two millimeter leather and these are both cut about 11 inches. So if you buy this in a kit, because this one will be available in kit and you can also buy the part separately. But if you do buy a kit, make sure that you take your piece and cut it in half because you'll get 22 inches of leather and we need two pieces. Also gonna use some of these beautiful new hibiscus flower uh, beads I just got in. I think they're so gorgeous. I also have some little, um, I think these are about, about a three by five or maybe a five by seven. No, I think they're about a three by five check glass, just a little accent bead. And then we also have some balled up head pins, some ear wires, and I have a couple different sizes of um, bead caps just for some decorative purposes there. So as far as tools, we're gonna be needing a ruler and our ever present barrel knot tube and our four basic tools. We've got our round nose pliers, our chain nose pliers, our bent chain nose pliers, and a pair of cutters. And we're also gonna need a little bit of GS Hypo cement. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our little beaded parts because we need those on there first. So I'm just going to pop on one of these gorgeous hibiscus flowers. And I'm not sure what the code is on these, but these will also be available for sale on the website if you're interested in buying your own. So now I'm going to put on one of these little flower bead caps. And then I have these small little bead caps. They're very thin, but they just add just a little bit of an extra touch. And I'm all about adding just those little extra touches on things just to, you know, jazz it up a little tiny bit. It just, it doesn't do a lot. It just kind of gives it a little bit of a framework there. Now I want to make a nice wrap on this. You know, normally I like to try to do those messy wraps, but on this one, I'm actually going to make a really super nice wrap. So I want to take my very front of my pliers and put them on the uh, wire there. Get that out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing. And I don't want to do this because if I did, then I'm going to have a great big huge neck. So I'm just going to go down to the very end as low down as I can go so I can have a tiny neck. Now I'm going to take it and make the uh, tool parallel to the table and I'm going to bend away. So now we've created a nice little 90 degree angle. So now I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to place them on the wire. And I do want to make sure that I'm creating a loop that's big enough to accommodate the um, leather. So I want to come up enough so you can see that's just a little bit bigger than what the leather is. So on yours, if you don't have a long nose like mine, you might have to come up towards the end. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my finger from behind and push straight up and over, and then take my thumb and go straight down. Now I'm gonna open up my pliers, rotate them so they're parallel to the table, and then I'm gonna bring that tail straight to the back. So you can see that I was really forming that on there. I wanna make sure that I have a nice tight wrap on there. And now I want to rotate that a little bit so that it's sitting right on top of itself like a little lollipop. Now we're going to take our pliers and place them right across there. And now the first part is the most important part, getting that um, first little wrap sort of um, tightly wound around there. Now I do find when we only have that little tiny bit, it's hard to do it with your fingers. So grab the tail end of the wire with your pliers, your bent chain nose pliers, and always just grab the very end. So I always say take the tip of the wire and the tip of the tool. And I'm gonna sort of pull that around to get that locked in. And you can see how that locked that in there nice and tight. And then I let go when I came around. 
So let go. Not only is it easier on your arms not or your hands not to pull it around and around, but when you pull it around without letting go, you can um, run the risk of breaking your wire. Okay, so we've got our nice neat wraps. And then I'm gonna take my cutters and turn it onto the flush side and just come in here and give it a little trim. Now you will have a little bit of a burr left over. So it's probably the easiest way for me to show you is like that. You can see that it's coming out there. And then I'm going to come in with my pliers and just kind of squish that down a little bit. I don't want to get too close to that bead because that is glass. So but now you can see that we've got a really nice wrap loop and it is going to go this direction. So if you don't like that coming to the front, you can turn it around and you'll have that. So that's exactly what you want. Now, if it's tilting a little bit, you just kind of straighten it out. And there we go. Okay, now that we've got our beautiful little uh, flower charm at the bottom, we're going to create our little knotted area. So the first thing you want to make sure that you do is put your uh, flower charm on first. Okay, so we're going to put that on. And then I'm going to pull this bottom piece out about three inches. So I'm just going to kind of measure and now it doesn't have to be exact, but that's about the amount that I want to pull through. So I've got my charm at the, about the three inch mark and then I'm going to rotate it so that it goes back and just leaves a little bit out of the end. Okay. It's going to be a lot of fingers in the way. So you're going to have to <laughs> bear with me and hopefully we can get through this together. So I've got a little loop here like that. And now I'm going to create a barrel knot. So I've just going to place that there. You can just kind of, you know, manhandle it and you can get it all into position after the fact. So I want to make sure that my long piece is on top like always and I've just got that looped underneath so you can probably see now that the tail's coming out there. I've just got a loop. Now I'm going to wrap towards my left thumb and I'm going to go three full times around. So now you're going to be able to see a little better because I've got a little bit um, wrapped around there. It makes it a bit easier to see. Okay. So I'm going to now take that tail and put it through the back end of my tube. And then I'm going to pull the tube out and then you'll see where that came out. And I'm just going to pull it so that I can uh, show you what we're going to be doing here. Okay, so this is like a double barrel knot. So it's a little bit different than what I normally do in that it, if I was just to tighten this one up, taking this long one that we pulled through, if I was to tighten that all the way up, you'd have uneven links and we don't want to have that. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and make this approximately one inch long. And you can see right now it's about an inch and a quarter. So there's sort of some mechanics to think about. Now, if I want to make this loop a little bit smaller, I can't just pull this because you can see it pulls that loop right through. So you kind of have to go backwards like you do if you're trying to tighten up your shoelaces. So you're going to try and figure out which one of these loops makes this one smaller. So you can see that if I pull on this one here, so not the one that's got the tail, but the one that's right here. Get my fingers out of the way there and pull. You can see how much smaller that makes that. So I want my loop about that large. And now I have to make this one smaller. So I'm going to pull that one. And you can see that now it made that one a little bit bigger. So you kind of have to go back and forth a little bit. So you just kind of pull and then you, I find if you kind of hold on to this a bit, and pull at the same time, it will sort of work. You kind of just have to play around with it a bit. Now this is just about an inch long. So I'm going to take this long one on the right here and I'm going to tighten that up. So I find the best thing is to kind of take my thumb like I know, you know, when I make these all the time in all my videos, I take my thumbnail and I place it about where I want this to be tightened up. So I'm going to get this tightened up a bit just to kind of get this into position. I can pull this way too. Now we can see that that is just a little bit bigger than I want it. So now we can sort of um, pull and, and push to get it where we want. So I want to pull this one and that is making that smaller. And then I'm going to pull this one and it makes that one smaller. So there we go. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to kind of twist this to the direction that I want. Now I'm going to take this long one and tighten it up one more time and I'm really pulling on it. And now it's made it just a little bit ever so slightly off center. You can see that this one's a lot smaller than this one. So I'm going to actually, I want this one a little bit smaller on the top, just a tiny bit. There we go. But I want this one a little bit bigger. So I'm going to just pull backwards. And you just kind of have to, you know, there we go. You just kind of have to sort of play with it a little bit. 
but it does go. You just kind of have to monkey around. And then I'm gonna pull that tight again and see if that one's, yeah, that's exactly what I want. So you'll end up with something that looks like this. Let me just get rid of my ruler. Okay, so now we have our little sort of double barrel knot and we've got our beautiful flower hanging below. So now what I'm gonna do is come in here and trim these off. So now you wanna make sure before you do any kind of cutting that this is about as snug as you can get it. So I'm really pulling on that and getting it exactly where I want. I wanna make sure that my barrel knot is nice and stacked next to each other. And you'll see that on one side you get kind of two and a half and on the other you get like sort of two and three quarters. You can choose whatever side uh, you want to show on the front of your earring. You know, it doesn't really matter. So now I wanna take this part and pull it back and isolate and use the flush side of my cutters and get right in there and trim that off. And then I'm gonna repeat on the other side. So I wanna sort of pull that out of the way and that's so that we can get that cut as close as possible. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a little trick. If you don't like the color of this showing, like it is dyed leather, so you're gonna see the inside. I've just grabbed a little Sharpie and I'm just gonna kind of dot on top of that. And then it kind of uh, makes it a little bit darker and you don't see that. If you don't do it, it doesn't matter. I I'd sometimes do it, sometimes I don't. It just depends on the feel. Um, on this one, I probably wouldn't. But if you are one of those people that does not like to see anything that doesn't look like it's supposed to be there, then you know maybe you'll wanna um, learn how to do that little trick, okay? Okay, so now I wanna make sure that I am getting enough glue on here so that this doesn't come apart because this does not tighten up all the way. So I wanna put a little dab on top of that. So you wanna make sure you have uh, glue on both sides there. And then I'm gonna flip it over, find that other little cut end and then just glue there. And now we're just gonna set that aside and let it dry. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. Now you wanna make sure that you use a glue that doesn't show too much. We wanna show the beauty of the leather and not the uh, glue. So you don't, it's kind of that, you know, thing where you wanna use enough, but not too much. Okay, so I'm gonna take my ear wire and I'm just gonna place my pliers across and open it up something like a jump ring. And I'm gonna slip that on and I'm gonna tighten that up. And you just kind of tighten it up by jiggling it back and forth. You don't want to distress your leather at all. And there we go. So I'm just gonna finish the second one off a of camera and I'll be right back. So there you go. There are our double barrel knot earrings. I think these ones are so cute and they're a lot easier to make than I probably made it look. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you're showing how to do these things with the leather and it's such a small little piece, you get all your thumbs in the way and <laughs> all that sort of stuff. So it's super, super simple to throw together. It's great if you have little scrap pieces of leather and you don't need a whole lot to create the bottom here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give me a like, leave me a comment, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. This will be available in kit form. You just go down to the description box below the video and there will be a link that will take you directly to my fully secure website at www.kellysbeadboutique.com. Also, make sure to stick around for a second and see who won all the fabulous prizes from the Great Beat Extravaganza event. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next one.